Oni funya me, papa wani mira, me roti ya eja mini shika, ona mafumbo, maya uboni mira, inti na maba so dum funya me, fa mi boni chemi, oni funya me.
to me in a man, Yamia. Never want to die, would him send the young Cocontia. Daniel Shadrach, Mesha, I bet you never to me in a man, Yamia. Never want to die, would him send the young Cocontia. Oh, my, say, I shall be wrong. Oh, be a missing, I may be from you, and you. Oh, be a big girl, be a
And welcome to the fourth day of our transformational series, Living with Hope. When I say living with, you say hope. Living with? Living with? When I say living with, you shout hope. Living with? Living with? Ah, the energy is in the house tonight. I am your host, the one and only, Ame Siyama, and I said I'm a Pukuya Siyama, and I'm here to bring you your series for tonight. Again, it is day four of our nine days in the transformational series. Once again, every single night, we bring you with some gifts and some prizes that you are able to get. But before we get started, you have to do this one thing for me. This one thing that I always ask for. And in fact, you've been doing a great job because the numbers have been going up, but they're not up high enough because there's still more people who need to hear the message. So make sure that you're sharing your screens, Facebook, Hope TV Ghana, YouTube, Hope Channel Ghana, and also the outdoor broadcast. 
We are streaming in four different languages. Tri, Ewe, Ga, Dagbani. So if you know anybody who needs to hear the message within these languages, please share those links. So we're gonna move on to our gifts time. But before we move to our question for our in-person crowd, I'm going to ask Justin to introduce what we have for tonight. Thank you, Ama. So for tonight, we have our special self-care package, and it has toothbrush and a toothpaste that will help keep your teeth clean and healthy. And we have things that will help keep your body fresh and nice. We have fresh scent bar soap, and we have hand sanitizer that will help keep your hands away from gems. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. So this is how it's going to work. I'm going to say the question, and the first person in which my coordinator hears says the answer will win. And we also have two prizes for our first two arriving visitors of tonight. So the in-person audience, are you ready for your question? I don't think you're ready. For my in-person audience right in front of me, are you ready for your question? Your question is, Fill in the blank. Day three, which was yesterday, because today is day four, day three evening's topic was living with hope in the face of blank. Raise your hand. Who knows the answer? She got it? Living with hope in the face of death. Come on up for your prize. And let's give them a round of applause. Let's also give a loud round of applause for our two visitors who also came first. Give them a round of applause as well. Go ahead and head up to Justin. So for my online crowd, your question, and as I present it, remember, you are texting your full name and location to the number on the screen. But let's please remember the rules. If you're in here, in this audience right now, you cannot use your phone to answer the question. It's not fair. So for my online audience only, please text your full name, your location, and the right answer to the number on the screen. And your question is, the health and wellness section team is using the creation as their acronym for the transformational series. We know that C stands for choice, R stands for rest. What does the E in the creation stand for? So once again, go ahead and send your answer with your full name, your location to the number on the screen, which is 059-780-447. But before we reveal who our online winner is, I'm going to ask Justin to reveal our winner of the prize in person and our winning prizes of those visitors who came right early here for our program this evening. All right, so tonight our winner is Zipura. Let's shout a big amen. All right. And the first two visitors are Roswita and Priscilla. Please let's all shout a big amen. Amen. Let's continue amen. to give them a round of applause. In fact, because our visitors did so well and our visitors have been doing such a great job, I wanna try something. So if you are a visitor in this house tonight, go ahead and stand up. If you're a visitor, stand up for me. All my visitors, stand up, stand up. You are online as well. If you're a visitor, please stand up. Let's give a round of applause for our visitors. They have been doing an excellent job of coming every single night. Now, without further ado, our gift section has come to a pause. We'll announce our winner later. I'm going to introduce 
Our speaker, the one and only, the dynamic professional in his field, in the marriage and family life segment, we have Dr. Samson Chumasi. Let's give a round of applause for him. Once again, before he speaks, let's make sure we are sharing our channels, sharing our screens and the links so that everybody can tune into this message. Let me say good evening to everyone. Good evening. Living with, living with, living with, and I strongly believe that even in our marriage relationships, we can instill hope within these nine days of transformational revival here. Yesterday, we talked about how to have the best marriage. Tonight, we are going to look at something different. So tonight, our topic is relational Pepsi. You know, I don't like Pepsi. And health professionals and doctors are also trying to advise us not to drink it because of the amount of sugar in Pepsi. But tonight, I am going to give you permission to drink this Pepsi in your relationship. I'm not going to talk about the ordinary Pepsi that you find in the market, the ordinary Pepsi that you find in the supermarket, the ordinary Pepsi that sometimes you find it in the restaurant. I am going to give you a Pepsi to drink tonight in your marriage relationship and make sure you take it every day. Though, let me say it again, Pepsi is something that I don't encourage. But when it comes to marriage relationship, tonight I give you, you and your wife, the permission to drink Pepsi. All right, let's go on. This Pepsi that I'm going to recommend to you, it will make your marriage strong. And when we spell Pepsi, it is P-E-P-S-I. So number one, for the P, in order to have a great and healthy relationship, the P stands for pray for each other. Make sure in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, every day, pray for your wife, pray for your husband, pray for each other that you will not fall into any temptation. Once you pray for each other, God will give you the strength and your marriage will remain strong. Now, from P, we go to E. E also stands for make sure that you encourage each other in your marriage relationship. Once you encourage each other, the devil has no business to come into your relationship. Once you discourage each other, then you are giving the devil the permission to come into your home. So make sure that in drinking this Pepsi every day, be a source of encouragement to your wife, to your husband, to your children, and anyone in your home so that they can move on in their life. Then we are spelling Pepsi. We have P, pray for each other. E, encourage each other. Then the next P is that you must do everything to protect each other in the marriage. Protect your husband. Protect your wife. Protect them from evil. Protect them from temptation. Protect them from anything that can destroy your marriage. Once you protect your wife, once you protect your husband, at the end of the day, you are going to enjoy your marriage. And the devil will have no business coming into your home. So we have P-E-P. -E the next is S. S means make sure that every day you serve each other. Servanthood. 
brings joy into your home. Once you have learned to be a source of serving each other, you will realize that the marriage is growing. You do things for each other. Then you, at the end, have a marriage that is not based on selfishness because you are serving each other. And then finally, for our Pepsi tonight, invest in each other. Invest in your wife. Invest in your husband. Though I don't encourage you drinking Pepsi that is sold in the market, but this particular Pepsi, praying for each other, encouraging each other, protecting each other, serving each other, and investing each other, you will reap the harvest. And every day, you will see your marriage growing. And as the Apostle Paul told us in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, tonight, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if there is anything, think about this Pepsi. In your home, in your relationship, and in everything that you do, once you think about this Pepsi, it will give you a marital health. And every day, you have a new testimony and you have something to rejoice because that is what God, this is the Pepsi that God wants you to give to your wife and this is the Pepsi that God also wants you to give to your husband. If you do that, we'll have a great marriage. God bless you. Tomorrow at this time, we will meet again. Have a good night. Living with, living with, living with, and we can have hope in our marriage relationship. God bless you all. Say, he's not encouraging to actually drink Pepsi, but this particular Pepsi is good for your marriage and family life. Now, before I introduce my next speaker, his segment has to do with empowerment. And in fact, I want to impress him a little bit. So when I say living with, you say hope. Living with? Hope. Living with? Hope. I don't think he's going to feel welcome enough. So you at home and you joining me in person, if you have been empowered by his message so far, and if you are ready to hear his message right now, when I say living with, you shout hope. Living with? Hope. Living with? Hope. Off to you, Dr. Kofi Chumisi, with our empowerment message. All right. Living with? Hope. Living with? Hope. Living with? Oh, I want everybody to repeat after me, say, I. I. Come on now, everybody. That was somebody, not everybody. I. 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 Want. Whoa, 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 whoa. Our energy went down. Our energy went down. I. I. Want. 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 To. to be. be. Empowered. Empowered, I, I want, want to, to be empowered. Somebody put in the chat empowered. Somebody on Facebook put empowered. Somebody on YouTube put empowered. Somebody in the crowd put empowered. I want you to understand something here today because we're going to see how we can empower our lives because people with power empower their lives. Oh, let me say that one more time. People with power empower their lives. So you know what? I want us to see how we can be empowered again tonight. So we're going to talk about the moments to kill. Everybody say moments. Come on, that was somebody, not everybody. Moments. Moments. Moment. To, to kill. kill. You see, I've realized in life that the moments to kill require you to kill those moments. Okay, okay, let me say that one more time. The moments to kill 
require you to kill those moments because life is all about seizing the right moments. And when you seize that moment, you don't just fail in that moment. Do you want to fail in the moment? Say no. No. When you get to a moment, you don't want to fail, you want to succeed. So I want to help you all succeed in the right moments. But some of you may be asking, go, go. Some of you in Ashdown, in Accra, in Kumasi, in, in America might be asking, how can I kill the right moments? All right, let me help somebody out this evening. Seizing the right moment requires sensing the right moment. Oh, come on, somebody. My people in Penquasi are quiet tonight. Seizing the right moment requires sensing the right moment. Everybody, I want you to understand what it means to seize the moment. Because a lot of you, when it comes to certain moments in life, if that moment does not have a paycheck attached to it, we don't want to deliver in that moment. We don't want to attach ourselves to that moment. But what I want us to understand that in life, if we're going to succeed, sometimes opportunity does not always come with a paycheck. Oh, come on, somebody. Opportunity does not always come with a paycheck because seizing the right moment is not always attached to a check. Seizing the right moment is not always attached to glory, but seizing the right moments can change our lives for the better. Do you believe it can change for our lives for the better? Say, oh yeah. Oh yeah. So what does it mean to sense the right moment? Let me tell you this. Because we have to sniff the right moments. So what does it mean to sense the right moment? You see, several people have defined moments or seizing the right moments as a moment that is instinct, a moment that is of nature, a moment that you can't even explain, it's just of a natural phenomenon. So when we are trying to sense the right moment, our spirit and our mind needs to align. Because when our spirit and mind aligns, there lies our moment. So when we let the spirit and we let the discernment of our lives align, we can sense the right moment. But some of you may be asking, why do I need to sense the right moment to have success in my life. You see, all of us on this earth were planted to ensure that we can see something great because the world is not our home, but it is our calling. Come on, somebody. The world is not our home, but it's our calling. So we cannot live in this world without trying to determine the moments for us to see. Because if we are going to be successful in life, we have to find the moments where we can do value addition value addition. How can I use a moment to improve somebody's life? How can I use a moment to bless somebody's life? How can I use a moment to serve somebody's life? How can I use a moment to change somebody's life? Do you want to change somebody's life tonight? Do you want to change someone's life tonight? Give a life tonight. We're talking about seizing the right moment. But the first thing we learned this evening is that seizing the right moment requires sensing the right moment. So you need to be able to sniff the right moment. But let me help you all out because there's a second movement that we need to discern in order for us to seize the right moment. This is it right here. Seizing the right moment requires sensing the right moments that will nourish your prowess. All right, that's a big word. Let me help you all, let me downsize that word. Seizing the right moment requires sensing the right moments that will strengthen your skill sets. Okay, so some of you on YouTube, on Facebook, some of you that are in the churches watching this stream right now may be asking, Kofi, Kofi, what is the moment that will nourish my skill sets. You see, in life, there is two types of skill sets. There is 
acquired skill sets. Everybody say acquired. Come on, that was somebody, not everybody. Everybody say acquired. If you're in the chat, type acquired. If you're on YouTube, type acquired. If you're on Facebook, type acquired. Everybody say acquired. Acquired. So we have acquired skill sets and we have natural skill sets. Everybody say natural. Natural. So I said we have two gifts. What's the first gift, everybody? Acquired gifts. Everybody say acquired gifts. Then the second one we have is natural gifts. You see, these are some of the two gifts. Even the third one I can add is spiritual gifts. But let me just work with acquired and natural gifts. Because God has blessed you with a gift. That is what we call a natural gift. You don't even have to work hard at it. Then, as you gain and grow in life, you gain acquired skill sets. That is the skill set based on education, based on something you learn from a vocation. I want you to understand something here. God gave you a gift. And if God gave you a gift, you got to gift the world with your gift. Come on, somebody. If God gave you a gift, you have to gift the world with your gift, your gifting. Because season the right moments requires sensing the moments that will nourish your skill sets. Do I have anybody who loves to cook in this building? Anybody who likes to cook? Anybody who likes to cook? Anybody who likes to cook? All right, all right, all right. Maybe somebody online. But maybe you have a skill set that God has ordained your life with. Greatness requires measuring up to your gift not downplaying your gift. Oh, somebody, Hope TV, you better put this as a quote. Somebody make this as a quote. Somebody, my note takers in the chat, make sure you put this in. Greatness requires blessing the world with your gift, not downplaying the world with your gift. So sensing the right moment requires, or seizing the right moment requires sensing the right moments that will nourish your prowess. You see, the right moment is about momentum building. When you seize the right moments, your life starts to be filled with elation. Your life starts to be filled with glory because you are seizing moments that is improving your skill sets. If you want to improve your skill sets this evening, just clap. Just clap for God. Just clap for God. Just clap for God. Everybody say I. Everybody say I. Want to be empowered. I said seizing the right moment requires sensing the right moment. Then seizing the right moment requires sensing the right moments that will nourish your prowess. But some of you may be asking, go, 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 go. Somebody on YouTube, somebody in America, somebody in New York City, somebody in Accra, somebody in Kumasi, somebody in the North, somebody in the Eastern region, say, go. How can I seize the right moments and keep on personally growing in my life and still feel motivated? Let me help somebody here. Seizing the right moment requires seizing the basic moments that can yield a long-term impact. Abna, Kofi, Kojo, you don't live for yourself. You live for posterity. Remember, personal maturity is when you start thinking about the welfare of other people. Do I have people in here who care about others? Do I have people in here who want to serve others? Do I have generational thinkers? Do I have generational doers? Do I have generational visionaries? If I have generational visionaries here, clap for God. See, in the right moment. It's about making a long-term impact. See, some of us, we live in this world, but we're only tilted on making short-term impacts. We're only tilted on making impacts that better ourselves. But true, but true empowered people, they take up the moments that yield a long-term impact. I want to live for my grandkids. I want to live for the next generation. I want to see the next generation. I want to give gifts to the next generation. If I'm going to do this, ladies and gentlemen, we have to seize the right moments. Then my final one, before I close out. 
Seizing the right colossal moment is predicated on what you pour into that colossal moment. All right. Somebody on YouTube, somebody on Facebook, my note takers, you better put this in the, in, the, in the chat box. Seizing the right colossal moment, it simply means seizing the big moments. It's predicated on what you pour into that moment. You see, when your moment comes, I believe in this mantra. You have to stay, you, you have to stay, you don't have to get ready, but you have to stay ready when your moment comes. I stay ready, get ready. Everybody say, stay ready. Stay ready. I don't have to get ready. Okay, I was too fast for y'all. Stay ready. Stay ready. I don't have to get ready. If I stay ready in life, when my big moment comes, when my big opportunity comes, I'm gonna step into that moment. I'm gonna step into that moment. Because let me tell my people up in Kwasa this evening, the right moments or the moments to kill require killing those moments. If I have people who want to seize the right moments and kill the right moments, I want you to clap for God. 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 Say, I, 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 I want to be empowered, 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 empowered. God bless you all. All right, let's continue to give a loud round of applause for Dr. Kofi Chimasi. Thank you so much. If I have learned anything, it's that I want to be empowered. And by being empowered, I have learned that I need to take my gifts to make a long-term impact and not a short-term impact. Now for this next section, before we get started, I'm going to ask you to do something with me. So listen carefully. I need everyone at this very moment to take a deep breath in and out. One more time, in and out. Because when we are about to get active, we have to learn to train our hearts and our bodies to be ready for this. But let's do one more stretch. You're gonna lift your right arm, everybody do it with me, and you're gonna lift your left arm, and you're gonna stretch and say, hope, hope. Get your stretches out, hope. And with that, I'm going to welcome our next session with the health and wellness is Mr. David Amponsa. Give a round of applause for him. Living with hope, living with hope, living with hope. Amen. Our next letter for today is the fourth letter of the word creation. The fourth letter is A, and that goes with activity. The acronym for A is activity. What is activity? Activity is movement of the body and development of the mind. The mind and the body are inseparable. Improving one also improves the other. Next, I'm going to list six benefits of physical activity. Take notes. The first one, phys physical activity nourishes, provides nourishment and oxygen for the body. Physical activity provides nourishment and oxygen for the body. Number two, physical activity strengthens the heart and the lungs. Physical activity strengthens the heart and the lungs. Number three, physical activity will improve your endurance. Physical activity improves your endurance. Number four, physical activity also improves your health. Physical activity improves your health. And number five, physical activity boosts your self-confidence. Physical activity boosts your self-confidence. 
And number six, the last one. Physical activity improves your brain function. Physical activity improves your brain function. Some of the activities that we have are on this slide. You can see people playing soccer. That's one activity. Another activity is running or sprinting. A third activity is walking or jogging. And a fourth activity is skipping or jump roping. At this time, we're going to have our quiz question. And we ask that if you've already received a gift for the health section, you allow somebody else to answer this question so they could also receive a gift. All right, Justin, could you tell us what our gift is for this section? Hello. Our gift for tonight. So our gift for tonight is a brand new football. Amen. Amen. So our question for our guest in-house in is, can you name one of the benefits of physical activity? One of the six. One, two, three. If you know the answer, come on come up, up, stand next to me. Oh, I only need one person. <laughs> one at a time. All right, David, ask the question one more time. The question is, name one of the benefits of physical activity. Improves your confidence. Say your name one more time and then say the answer. My name is Zipora. It improves your confidence. David, is that right? Yes, that's correct. Good job. All right, step down and go ahead and get your gift. Okay. And for our online people, text or call the number on your screen. Your question is, give one of the sports that is illustrated of physical activity. Give a sport that provides physical activity. I gave four of them today. And we will find out who the winner is. Right now, we're going to give Zippora the prize. And we're looking for the winner online who gets the correct answer of which sport provides physical activity. We're still waiting for the correct answer. We'll give you a few more minutes to get that answer online. Those of you watching YouTube or on Facebook. Okay, we'll, come. we'll give you 10 more seconds, then we'll come back to the winner if we don't get one within the next 10 seconds. All right, remember to get your physical activity. We'll come back with the answer later. Thank you so much, David. You heard it here. We have six activities you need to do to keep active. And as you saw, our winner got a brand new soccer ball. So if you're interested in these activities, keep playing them back. Now, before we have our speaker come up, we're going to have our world-renowned Orion Choir sing a special selection for us. But please, make sure you are streaming the channels. 
Make sure you're sharing the screens. You need to share the screen, Facebook, Hope TV Ghana, and then on YouTube, Hope Channel Ghana, so that they are getting the message across. Also make sure that if you're streaming on the outdoor broadcast, that you're changing it to the language that you prefer. There are four different languages outside of English that we are streaming on. It's Tri, Ewe, Ga, and Dagbani. So please make sure you are sharing. So now we're gonna have our musical selection by the Orion Choir, and then afterwards we'll have our speaker, and I'll introduce him before it's time.
Let's give it up for them. A louder round of applause. So before they give us our theme song, I would like to pose a question to you. And actually, I apologize. I should have asked this question in the beginning of the program. Our transformational series is called Living with Hope. However, I never asked you, what does hope mean to you? So for those of you at home, let me know in the chat, what does hope mean to you? And those of you sitting in front of me, go ahead and think about what hope means to you. So once again, we are going to welcome our pastor, Kwejo Chumasi. But before he comes up, we're going to have our choir sing the theme song, and we're going to hear the inspiring message that he has been giving. Again, this is day four. Is it day one? Is it day two? Is it day three? Then what day is it? Day four. So once again, make sure you are sharing your screens. Right before he comes up, you still have some time. When the choir finishes singing the theme song, I need to make sure you have visitors and others who are tuning in and do not miss this message. So after the Orion Choir, the person you will hear from is none other than Pastor Kwejo Chumasi. At this time, we would like to give you a special, special aquaba to the Living with Hope program. Once again, let's say it together. Living with hope. Living with hope. Living with hope. Living with hope indeed. You know, we would like to give a special welcome not only to those who are here in Penquasi, but we give a special welcome to those who are all over the nation of Ghana. Whatever region you're in, in the north, in the south, to the east, or to the west, we say a special welcome to you. But we know that there is more than a national audience, but there is an international audience. So whatever country you are in, whether it's in America, whether it's in England, whether it's in Italy, whether it's in Australia, whether it's in some country in Asia, we say a special aquaba to the Living with Hope program. Well, I say all the time that we as human beings, we can live with fear. We can live with doubt. We can live with worry. But by the grace of God, we're choosing to live with hope. And the Living with Hope program, it's a time of so many things. First, the Living with Hope program. It's a time of beautiful music. Every evening, beautiful selections are sung at the Living with Hope program. Number two, the Living with Hope program is a time of gifts and prizes. Many gifts and prizes have been given, and we encourage you to keep coming every single night. Number three, the Living with Hope program, as you see there, right there on the screen, is a time for health and also for wellness. We have the health program that takes place from two and happening all the way till four. And some of you have come to it and we hope you are blessed. Living with Hope program is also a time for insights. We have three different insights we have been giving you every night. Empowerment insights. We've been giving you health insights and we're also giving you marriage insights. 
And so we're glad that you are here at the Living with Hope program. But more than anything else, the Living with Hope program is a time for decisions. I said it's a time for what, everybody? For what, everybody? For decisions. In life, we make all kinds of decisions. We have big decisions and we have small decisions. But today I'm here to tell you that the most important decision is to accept Jesus in your heart as the Lord and Savior of your life and to come down to the waters and to be baptized. Tonight, we have a powerful message coming from above. Tonight's message is powerful. And tonight is the first part of a two-part message. Tonight, the message is called Living with Hope in God's Rest. Tonight, the message is called Living with Hope in God's Rest. Wherever you are, why don't we bow our heads? Let us pray. Let us begin. Lord, wherever somebody is at this moment, they're living with pain. They're living with doubt. They're living with fear. But today, we want to live with hope. Yesterday, we learned how to live with hope in the face of death. But today, we want to learn how to live with hope in your rest. At this moment, we pray that your spirit will fill this place in a mighty, magnanimous, and a meaningful way. Bless us in Christ's name. Amen. I want to begin my message today by starting off like this. I came to Ghana on Friday. I landed here around 6 p.m. And when I landed, the first thing that they told me is that they said, this day is a holiday. And when they told me that this day was a holiday, I began to think about the institutions of holidays in our society. And I said to myself, we as human beings have so many holidays. And so, for example, every year in Ghana, when December 1st comes around, what is the holiday that we celebrate here in Ghana? We celebrate the holiday called Farmer's Day. This is an example of one holiday. Or every time March 6th comes around, we celebrate a special holiday. And as you see, as it's, you see it displayed, we celebrate the holiday of Ghana's Independence Day. There are different holidays that we celebrate. Now, what the interesting thing is, is that I was thinking to myself one day, and I said to myself, what is the purpose of a holiday? And as I reflected on this question, I came up with two answers. Number one, the first purpose of a holiday is to remember something. And number two, the second purpose of a holiday is to celebrate something. And so, for example, every year, December 1, when Farmer's Day comes, we are remembering and we are celebrating all of the farmers that provide us food in this economy. Or, for example, when March 6 comes, what we are doing is that we are celebrating. We're celebrating the fact that Ghana achieved independence from colonial rule under the British. We are remembering and we are celebrating. This evening, I'm here to communicate with you that in the same way that society has holidays for us, holidays where we can rest in order to remember and to celebrate something. Tonight, I'm here to let you know that God also has a holiday as well. He has a holiday where we can rest 
so that we can remember and we can celebrate not just something, but we can rest and we can celebrate someone. But what I love about God, people of Penquasset and people of Ghana and people all over the world, is that God's holiday is not just a regular holiday, but instead God's holiday is actually a holy day. God's holiday is actually a holy day. And what I love about God's holy, uh, holy day is that unlike traditional holidays, His holy day doesn't just come once a year for me to remember and celebrate. Instead, His holy day comes once a week for me to remember and to celebrate. In fact, this holy day, which we can celebrate on a weekly basis, is found in none other than the Bible. And the Bible calls this holy day, it calls it the Sabbath day. The Bible calls this holy day the Sabbath day. And tonight, what I want to do is that I want to give you and I five powerful truths about this Sabbath day. Five powerful truths about this Sabbath day. Brothers and sisters, are you ready for these five powerful truths? If you're ready, let me hear you say ready. If you're ready, let me hear you say ready. If you're ready, turn to the person next to you and say ready. Turn to the other person next to you and say ready. I believe that you are ready this evening. This evening, if you're in the chat, put in ready. Because tonight, I'm going to teach you five powerful truths about this, not just holy day, holiday, but God's special holy day. The first truth that I would like for you to know about the Sabbath is that the Sabbath is one day that God has set aside out of all the days in the week, not just for us to rest, but it is one day he has set aside in order for us to recover. I'll say that one more time. The Sabbath day is one day that God has set aside from the entire week, not just for us to rest, but he has set that day aside in order for us to recover. When I think about recovering, I think about my friend, Dr. Kennedy Donkor. And so, doctor, why don't you come up again? You know, I love using you uh, in order to teach uh, the people some illustrations. And so, Dr. Kennedy Donkor is here. And as you see, doc, why don't you come up over here? Why don't you come on up? Because we're going to talk about what it means to recover. Now, Dr. Kennedy Donkor here is a strong man. Isn't he a strong man, everyone? Say yes. All right, good. <laughs> you know, they can't say anything else. So Dr. Kenny Duck is a strong man, and he has a lot of muscles. You see his muscles over here. Very strong guy. Kennedy, you want to show them your muscles today? All right, very good. All right, you see his muscles over here. Now, if you want to build strong muscles like Kennedy, you've got to learn how Kennedy does it. The first thing that Kennedy does is that Kennedy exercises. And so, for example, Kennedy goes to the gym and he lifts some weights, like the weights that you're currently seeing on the screen. It's called a dumbbell that you curl. He lifts those weights. Or the second thing that Kennedy does is that he does exercises like push-ups. And so, Kennedy, do some push-ups so they can see the push-up that can Oh, man, wow. Look, 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 look at Wow, one. Come on, somebody, two. Come on, somebody, three. Come on, somebody, four. Come on, somebody, five. Come on, somebody, oh, you're going to get five. All right, all right, all right. So you see, he's a strong man. Now, hear me very carefully. You see, when Kennedy is exercising, what happens to Kennedy's muscles is that Kennedy's muscles tear. And so because they tear, in order for Kennedy in order for Kennedy to build his muscles, he must not only exercise, because when he exercises, his muscles tear, but also Kennedy must rest. Because when Kennedy rests, 
what begins to happen is that Kennedy's muscles begin to recover. And as Kennedy's muscles recover, that's how Kennedy's muscles begin to grow. Therefore, in order to grow your muscles, it's important not just to exercise. It's important to rest so that you can recover. And this is the reason why God has given us a Sabbath day. He has given us a Sabbath day because every day we work. We work when we go to our jobs. We work when we take care of our families. We work when we apply ourselves in school. We work when we deal with our various friendships. But the reason why God gives us the Sabbath day is because he knows that when we work, just like how Kennedy did those push-ups, and Kennedy was tired after he finished it. God knows that when we work, we begin to use all of our resources. And so he knows that when we work, we use our emotional resources. He knows when we work, we use our spiritual resources. He knows when we work, we use our mental resources. He knows when we work, we use our relational resources. He knows when we work, we use our physical resources. And so every single week, what God does is that he gives us one day so that we can rest. And when we rest, those emotional resources that were depleting, oh, by God's grace, it begins to recover. Those spiritual resources that were depleting, by God's grace, it begins to recover. Those mental resources that were depleting, by God's grace, it begins to recover. Those relational resources that were depleting, by God's grace, it begins to recover. Those physical resources that were depleting, by God's grace, it begins to recover. And now that we are recovered, we can go through the next week with enough strength not to live with fear and with enough strength not to live with doubt and with enough strength not to live with worry. But now that we are recovered, we can go through our next week with enough strength to live with hope. Are you hearing the word of God tonight, everybody? This is what the Sabbath does. It helps us to not just rest. It helps us to recover so that every single week we can have the strength to keep living with hope. But then there's a second powerful truth that I would love for us to know about the Sabbath. And the second powerful truth that I would love for us to know about the Sabbath is that the Sabbath is not an exclusive gift. Instead, the Sabbath is an inclusive gift. You see, when we say something is an exclusive gift, what we mean is that the gift is only for a few people. But when we say something is an inclusive gift, it means the gift is for everybody. You know, in America, there is a popular celebrity. And the name of that celebrity is called Oprah Winfrey. Many years ago, Oprah used to have a TV show. And the show was called the Oprah Winfrey TV show. And so one day, Oprah decided to do something. She decided to get a gift box. And she took this gift box. And she placed, and in this gift box, she placed a key inside. And the key that she placed inside was the key to a new car. And then what she did is that she had an audience full of people. And she put the box into the hands of every single person in the audience. Then she looked at the audience and she said that in all the boxes that are there, all the boxes, only one of them have a key to the new car. And so everybody was nervous because they were holding the box. And they said, is my box going to have the key? All of a sudden, they opened up the box. And when they opened up the box, 
everyone looked inside of the box and they noticed that everyone had a key. And so all of a sudden, Oprah started screaming. She said, you get a car and you get a gift and you get a gift and you get a gift and you get a car. Everybody gets a car. Everybody gets a gift. And in the same sort of way, that's what I'm here to communicate tonight. You see, many people think that the Sabbath is an exclusive gift only for a few people. Many people think that the Sabbath is an exclusive gift only for the Jews. Many people think that the Sabbath is an exclusive gift only for the Seventh-day Adventists. Many people think that the Sabbath day is only a gift for people in the Old Testament. But tonight I'm here to share with you that the Bible is not, that the Sabbath is not an exclusive gift only for a few people. But instead, the Sabbath is an inclusive gift for everyone in the whole world. The Bible says in Mark chapter 2 verse 29 that the gift of the Sabbath was made for all humankind. The Bible says that it was not humans that were made for the Sabbath, that the Sabbath was made for humans and not humans for the Sabbath. Therefore, all human beings have the privilege in order to enjoy this gift of the Sabbath. And so if you are a red person, you can enjoy the gift of the Sabbath because the Sabbath is for you. If you are a black person, you can enjoy the gift of the Sabbath because the Sabbath is for you. If you are a white person, you can enjoy the gift of the Sabbath because the Sabbath is for you. If you are a Kumasi person, you can enjoy the gift of the Sabbath because the Sabbath is for you. If you're a whole person, a God person, a tree person, an airway person, I don't care what person you are, the Sabbath gift is for you. Because the Sabbath is not just an exclusive gift for a few, but the Sabbath is an inclusive gift for everyone in the whole world. Humans were made for the benefit of the Sabbath. The Sabbath was not made to oppress human beings. This gift of the Sabbath is for everyone. And today, I want you to enjoy this gift as well. That's the second lesson we learned about the Sabbath. But there's a third powerful lesson that we learned about the Sabbath. And the third powerful lesson that we learned about the Sabbath is that the Sabbath is not a church idea. Instead, the Sabbath is God's idea. You know, a lot of people think that the Sabbath was invented by a church. But tonight I'm here to let you know that the Sabbath was not invented by a church. Instead, the Sabbath was invented by God himself. In fact, if you go to the beginning of the Bible, you make it to the book called Genesis. And in Genesis chapter 1, God makes the entire world. He creates it in six days. Then the seventh day comes, the seventh day, which is Saturday. And in Genesis 2 verse 1, what happens is that the Bible says that the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. And then what the Bible says is that on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done. And then the Bible says that not didn't he just end his work, but he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. But not only did he just rest on that day, but the Bible says in verse 3 that God blessed the seventh day and that he sanctified it as well. So tonight what I want you to understand is that the Sabbath was not an idea of a church, but the Sabbath was an idea of God. It was God's idea. Oh, and when God created the Sabbath, what God did is that he did three things to the Sabbath. The first thing that God did to the Sabbath is that God blessed the seventh day. And so family, what I want you to understand tonight is that every time the seventh day comes, which is Saturday, which is the Sabbath day, the first thing you must understand is that God has already blessed the day. Yes, God has blessed the air in that day. God has blessed the ground of that day. 
God has blessed the time in that day. God has blessed the trees in that day. God has blessed the place of that day. Whether you like it or not, the place is blessed. Whether you believe it or not, the day is blessed. Whether you want it or not, the day is blessed. Because God blessed the seventh day. And he blessed the Sabbath day. And tonight, this is why I want you to enjoy the gift of the Sabbath day. Hey, because if God blessed the Sabbath day, then it means that if you enjoy and keep the Sabbath day, then it means that you can also be blessed as well. Come on, somebody. Absolutely. If you are a person who enjoys God's Sabbath day, who keeps God's Sabbath day, who honors God's Sabbath day, then in the same way that the Sabbath day has blessings, those blessings transfer to you as well. Those blessings transfer to your family as well. Those blessings transfer to your relationships as well. Those blessings transfer to everything you touch in your life because God blessed the Sabbath day. But the second thing that God did on the Sabbath day, oh, is that God not only blessed the Sabbath day, but the Bible says that God sanctified the Sabbath day. The word sanctified, it means to set something apart. And so if you look at the picture on the display, you would see that seven days are there. Day one is there. Day two is there. Day three is there. Day four is there. Day five is there. Day six is there. And if you look at all of those days, they're all the same height, meaning they're all alike. They are all the same way. But then when you look at the seventh day, the seventh day is a little bit differently. Seventh day is a little bit taller than the other days. It shows that the seventh day is special. It shows that the seventh day is unique. It shows that the seventh day is one of a kind because God has sanctified the Sabbath day. And tonight, that's what I want you to know, that this Sabbath day is so special. It's not like any other regular day. It's not like a Monday. It's not like a Tuesday. It's not like a Wednesday. It's not like a Thursday. Instead, it is its own special day, that Saturday. Because the Bible says that God didn't only just bless that seventh day, but what God did is that he sanctified it as well. But then the third thing that God did when he created the Sabbath is that he didn't just bless the Sabbath day. He didn't just sanctify the Sabbath day. But the Bible says as well that he rested on the Sabbath day. This is why we must rest as well. We rest to follow God's example. God is a person who doesn't slumber. God is a person who doesn't get tired. God is a person who doesn't sweat. God is not a person who says, oh, I need a break. But God still saw the need for rest. And if God sees the need for rest, how much more we, the people of Ghana, whom when we go to the farm, we're breaking a lot of sweats. How much more for we, for the people of Ghana, when, when we go to the market, we are having a lot of energy. Wherefore, we, for the people of Ghana, when we go to school, we're putting out a lot of effort. It means that we also need rest in the same way that God rested. And if God rested, we should rest as well, and we must follow his example. And he has given us this Sabbath day for us to enjoy precisely so that we can do so. Thank God for the Sabbath that gives me the chance to rest. But tonight what I want to tell you is that the Sabbath is so much of God's idea that God included it in a special place of the Bible. He included it in a place called the Ten Commandments. These Ten Commandments are God's unchangeable laws. They are his laws that have been there since the time he introduced them. They have been there since the time human history began. And within these ten commandments, we find the fourth commandment. And the fourth commandment is found in Exodus 20, verse 8 through 11. 
And the fourth commandment says, remember the Sabbath day. Remember to keep it holy. Because for six days you shall labor. And you should do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work. Therefore, because it is a commandment of God, the Bible says if we love Christ, we should keep his commandments. Therefore, I want to keep the commandment of God. Not because I'm doing it in order to be saved, but because I am doing it because I love the Lord Jesus Christ. And one of the commandments he left for me was to remember his Sabbath day and to keep it holy. The fact that it is a commandment, it goes to demonstrate that this call to enjoy God's Sabbath is not something that a church invented. It's not something that a human invented. Instead, it is something that God has invented. And he has invented it for your good. He has invented it for your nourishment. He has invented it for your blessing. He has invented it for your abundance. He has invented it for your improvement. He has invented it so that you can live with hope. And my appeal to you this evening is to take advantage of this gift that God has given us so that we can be all he wants us to be in this world. But there's a fourth powerful truth about the Sabbath that I would love to teach you today. And the fourth powerful truth about the Sabbath is that the purpose of the Sabbath is the person of the Sabbath. The purpose of the Sabbath is the person of the Sabbath. You know, it's very interesting because I told you that about two months ago, I just got married and I was planning a wedding. And you know, when you're planning a wedding, there are so many parts to a wedding. You know, for example, you have to make sure you have the right food at the wedding. You've got to make sure you've got the right music at the wedding. You've got to make sure you got the right decorations at the wedding. You've got to make sure you got the right flowers at the wedding. You've got to make sure you got the right outfit at the wedding. You've got to make sure you got the right MC at the wedding. You've got to make sure you've got so many things at the wedding. But hear me very carefully. Though the food is important, and though the music is important, and though the decoration is important, and though the outfit is important, on the day of the wedding, my job is not to focus on the food of the wedding. Somebody's not listening to me. On the day of the wedding, my job is not to just focus on the music of the wedding. On the day of the wedding, my job is not to just focus on the flowers of the wedding. But on the day of the wedding, my job is to focus on the person in the wedding. And the person in the wedding is the person who I'm getting married to, and that is my wife. At the end of the day, if I'm focused on the food, but I forget about the person, I have destroyed the wedding. If I focus on the music, but I forget about my wife, I have destroyed the wedding. If I focus on the DJ, but I forget my wife, I have destroyed the wedding. If I focus on the flowers, but I forget my wife, I have destroyed the wedding. Is someone here in the pastor tonight? God has given us the Sabbath day. And on the Sabbath day, we can do many things. We can go to church on the Sabbath day. We can read our Bibles on the Sabbath day. We can do good things on the Sabbath day. We can sing in the choir on the Sabbath day. We can give our tithes and offerings on the Sabbath day. But hey, listen to me tonight. If I'm going to church on the Sabbath day, but I forget the person of the Sabbath day, I have destroyed the Sabbath day. If I sing on the Sabbath day, but I forget the person of the Sabbath day, I have destroyed the Sabbath day. If I do good on the Sabbath day, but I forget the person of the Sabbath day, I have destroyed the Sabbath day. Because the purpose of the Sabbath is not just to do the things of the Sabbath, but the purpose of the Sabbath is to focus on the person of the Sabbath. And the person of the Sabbath is not the person singing in the choir. 
And the person of the Sabbath is not the person preaching on the pulpit. And the person of the Sabbath is not the person who is leading out in the church. But the person of the Sabbath is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ is the person of the Sabbath. Matter of fact, Jesus says in Matthew chapter 12, verse 8, he says, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. And if Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath, then it means that he is what the Sabbath is all about. Therefore, every single week when the Sabbath comes about, the Sabbath is an opportunity to remember and to celebrate the person of the Sabbath, who is the Lord Jesus Christ. So when the Sabbath comes about, I want to pause and take time to remember and to celebrate that Jesus is the one who created me. When the Sabbath comes about, I want to take some time to pause so I can remember, to pause so I can celebrate that Jesus is the one who takes care of me. Every single week when the Sabbath comes about, I want to take some time to pause, to remember and to celebrate that Jesus is the one who is the one who gives me peace. Every time when the Sabbath comes about, it's a time for me to remember that Jesus is the one who not just creates me. Jesus is the one who not just redeemed me. Jesus is the one who not just saves me. Jesus is the one who not just purifies me. Jesus is the one who not just prays for me. But every week when the Sabbath comes, it's a reminder that Jesus is the one who one day is coming back for me to take me back home to glory. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful for the gift of the Sabbath because it gives me a chance to pause so I can remember and celebrate not just the day of the Sabbath, but the person of the Sabbath, who is the Lord of the Sabbath, who is none other than Jesus Christ. Give Jesus some glory in here today, everybody. Now, here are some things that I need you to understand. If Jesus is the person of the Sabbath, then we must learn some things about Jesus. The first thing you must learn is that Jesus kept the Sabbath. If you go to Luke chapter 4, verse 16, you find Jesus keeping the Sabbath there. The Bible says he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And while he was there, as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and he stood up in order to read the Scriptures. In other words, it was the custom of Jesus in order to go to the synagogue and to read and worship on Sabbath. What does it mean that it was his custom? Let me tell you what a custom means. Every single day that I wake up, I go to the bathroom and brush my teeth. That's called a custom. Every day when I wake up, I go and get some breakfast so I can eat. That's called a custom. Every single day I get in my car and I drive to work. That's called a custom. Every single day I come back home, I sleep on my bed. That's called a custom. In other words, a custom is something you do on a regular basis. A custom is not something that you do sometimes. A custom is not something that you do maybe. But a custom is something you do regularly. Oh, the Bible says that it was the custom of Jesus to go to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and to worship on the Sabbath day. This means that Jesus kept the Sabbath on a regular basis. And it only makes sense for Jesus to keep the Sabbath because the Sabbath is all about Jesus. Are you hearing me tonight, everybody? Oh, but not only did Jesus keep the Sabbath, but what we also learned is that since the Sabbath is all about Jesus, we learn that Jesus' disciples kept the Sabbath as well. If you go to Acts chapter 6 and verse 13, we have two of Jesus' disciples, Paul and Silas. 
and, they, and the Bible says that it was on the Sabbath day. They went outside the city gate. They went to a place called the river. There they went there because they expected to find a place of prayer. Therefore, on the Sabbath day, Jesus' disciples were looking for a place of prayer. They were looking for a place to worship because Jesus' disciples kept the Sabbath as well. Therefore, tonight what I'm trying to tell you is that the Sabbath is all about Jesus. He is the Lord of the Sabbath. And because he is the Lord of the Sabbath, Jesus kept the Sabbath. And I always say, if the Sabbath was good enough for Jesus, then it's good enough for me. And if the Sabbath is good enough for Jesus, then it's also good enough for you. But not only that, Jesus' disciples also kept the Sabbath. And if Jesus' disciples kept the Sabbath, then I want to keep the Sabbath as well. Because I am a disciple of Jesus. And as a disciple of Jesus, I must follow in the footsteps of Jesus. Because that's what it means to be called his disciple. Yes, tonight we've learned that the Sabbath is all about Jesus. He kept the Sabbath. His disciples kept the Sabbath. But what we also learn is that the Sabbath is a sign of Jesus' power. I said the Sabbath is a sign of Jesus' power. You know, church, let me talk to you at the moment. You know, all of us here are, 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 are sinful human beings. We have problems. We have challenges. We can't fix ourselves. Only Jesus can fix us. Only he can fix our pride. Only he can fix our lack of patience. Only Jesus can change us. But here's what I'm here to say to you tonight. Jesus changes us through his power. And every week when the Sabbath comes, it's a reminder that Jesus can transform you in your life. Every time the Sabbath comes, it's a reminder that Jesus can heal you from your pride. Every week when the Sabbath comes, it's a reminder that Jesus can heal you from your idols. Every week when the Sabbath comes, it's a reminder that Jesus can heal you from your sexual immorality. Every week when the Sabbath comes, it's a reminder that Jesus can heal you from your addictions. Every week when the Sabbath comes about, it's a reminder that Jesus can give you power over your alcoholism. Every Sabbath, when the, every week when the Sabbath comes about, it's a reminder that Jesus can deliver you from the witchcraft that you practice. Every week that the Sabbath comes about, it's a reminder that Jesus can give you power. I said Jesus can give you power. I said Jesus can give you power over every sin, over every bad habit, over every character flaw over every failure, over everything that tries to hold you back, the Sabbath is a reminder that Jesus has enough power in order to redeem you in your life. That's why I'm so glad when the Sabbath comes. And that's why I come to church on the Sabbath. And that's why I celebrate on the Sabbath. And that's why I worship God on the Sabbath. Because on the Sabbath day, it's a reminder to me that I should be so grateful. I should be so grateful that Jesus' power works in my life. And I want you to be able to experience the same thing as well. Matter of fact, look at what the Bible says about it. It says in Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 12, Moreover, I also gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between them and me that they might know that I am the Lord who sanctifies them. The word sanctifies means that he gives you power to be holy. Therefore, the Sabbath is a sign of Jesus' power. I got the final lesson to teach you. And the final powerful lesson to learn about the Sabbath is that there will never be an end 
to Sabbath celebrations. There will never be an end to Sabbath celebration. One day, I was thinking to myself, I said, man, I enjoy the Sabbath. I said, but will I be able to continue worshiping Christ on the Sabbath forever and ever? So I started searching the Bible. I went to the book of Genesis, found nothing there. Went to the book of Deuteronomy, found nothing there. Went to the book of Psalm, found nothing there. Got to the book of Job, found nothing there. Got to the book of Proverbs, found nothing there. But I kept on turning my Bible. Then I found myself in the book of Isaiah. Kept on flipping chapter 1, found nothing there. Made it to chapter 20, found nothing there. Got to chapter 60, found nothing there. But then I got to chapter 66. And I started reading verse 1, made it down to verse 2, got down to verse 22. Hey, then I started reading my Bible. And when I read my Bible, my Bible said something in there. It said, as the new heavens and as the new earth, which I shall make, shall remain before me, says the Lord. Oh, the Bible says, so shall your descendants and your name remain. Ah, then look at what the Bible says. And it says, it shall come to pass in this new heaven and earth that from one new moon to another. And look at what the Bible says. It says, and from one Sabbath to another. It says, and from one Sabbath to another. Even in the new heaven and the new earth, we as God's people, all flesh shall come to worship before me says the good Lord. Praise God. I found it in his word that even in the new heaven and new earth we will worship our Lord and Savior Jesus on his Sabbath as well. And so I always say if I'm going to worship Christ on his Sabbath in the new heaven and earth then I must learn how to worship him on his Sabbath right here on this earth as well as preparation for the new heaven and the new earth that is yet to come. Let me see the hands of those who want to worship God on his Sabbath. Who want to enjoy this gift of the Sabbath. Where we don't just rest, but by the grace of God we can begin to recover. I know your question. You're saying, Pastor, how can we be sure which day the Sabbath day is? Pastor, you said that it's Saturday. How can we be sure of that? Tonight is part one of the message. Tomorrow is part two. And tomorrow I will teach on how we can know the day of the Sabbath. So you must be here tomorrow you and everyone that you can invite so that you can know which day the Sabbath is and you can continually have hope in God's rest. I want to conclude my message on this note. You know, I love talking about my wife. And even though my wife is from Ghana, my wife has been learning some brothel sem. And, 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 and in America, there is something that they teach couples all the time. They say that couples must have what we call a date night. Couples must have what we call a date night. Do you know what a date night is? A date night is where it's just you and your wife. Nobody is there. No one is bothering you. You use that time to spend time with each other. Uninterrupted time with each other. It's a special date with you and your spouse. 
let me tell you, people of God. Elizabeth and I, we talk every day. We talk on Sunday. We talk on Friday. We talk on Monday. We talk on Saturday. We talk every single day. But from time to time, my wife will come to me and say, I know we talk every day, but I would love for us to have a date night, a special day where we have uninterrupted time that we spend with each other. She says, Kwajo, on this day, I don't want no church, church members calling you. He says, Kwajo, on this day, I don't want your mom calling you. He says, on this day, I don't want your cousins calling you because it's a special date between you and I. Can I bring it home tonight? In the same sort of way, we can worship God any day. In the same sort of way, we can spend time with God any day. But God has given us his Sabbath day because he says that once a week, I want a special time between you and I. Matter of fact, he says once a week, I want a date day. I want a date night between you and I. He says this day, I don't want any interruptions. This day, I don't want any distractions. That's why on the Sabbath day, I want you to put your work aside. That's why on the Sabbath day, I want you to put your business aside. That's why on the Sabbath day, I want you to put your schoolwork aside because the Sabbath day is a special day for you and I to spend time with each other so that we can know each other, we can grow with each other, we can love each other. And when you spend time with God on his special day like this, oh, what a refreshing time it is. You know, every time I spend time with my wife on a special date day, what happens on that day is that our marriage leaves refresh. Our relationship leaves refresh. Our bond leaves refresh. And in the same way, that's what happens when you spend time with God. When you spend time with Christ on his special Sabbath day, you leave that Sabbath day feeling restored, feeling revived, and feeling refreshed so that when the week begins you don't go around living with stress when the week begins you don't go around living with worry but when the week begins because you have experienced God's rest by God's grace you begin to live with 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 the word of God has been preached. And tonight you've heard the word. And every time the word is preached, you have three options. Option number one, you can reject God's word. Option number two, you can do nothing about God's word. But option number three, you can make a decision. And at the Living with Hope Transformational Series, every night we're making an invitation to you. We're making an invitation to you to be able to make a decision to follow Jesus. Every evening, we don't want you to go back home the same. We don't want you to be the same person, but we want you to be transformed. And so tonight I make my call to you. You're saying, Pastor Kojo, I've learned about the Sabbath tonight. And you're saying, Pastor Kojo, because I've learned the Sabbath, I want to start keeping the Sabbath. I want to start keeping the Sabbath. I want to enjoy the special gift that God has given. Maybe you've never kept the Sabbath before. I want to invite you and say this is your first opportunity to do it. You can worship God on his special day, his holiday, his holy day, and you can keep his Sabbath. 
But maybe you're here today. And you're saying, Pastor Kojo, not only do I want to keep the Sabbath, but I want to follow Christ. I want to come down to the waters, and I want to be baptized. And so today, as I'm here, the invitation is open to you. And at this moment, I give you encouragement. If someone today want to say, I want to get baptized, I want to follow the Lord, I would love to come to him. I invite you to come down. And say, today it's me. I want to be baptized. By God's grace, I'm making my choice today. God bless you, young man. God bless you. God bless you, young man. Let's put our hands together for him, everybody. There's somebody else here today. Say, I want to join this group. I want to get baptized, give my heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to surrender all. All to Jesus. I make my second call. Maybe you're in one of the churches. And while you're there in one of the churches, you say, I've learned about the Sabbath day too. And I like to keep the Sabbath day. I want to follow God on his Sabbath. So you're saying, I too want to get baptized. I too want to give my heart to Christ. I too want to follow him all the way. I invite you at this moment. Why don't you raise your hand? Why don't you stand on up? Say, I'm following the Lord Jesus Christ. Make that invitation to you. My third call. Maybe you're not in a church. Maybe you're in a home. Maybe you're at a work. Maybe you're in your car. You're listening to us. You can text the number that's on the screen. You can say, my name is X, Y, or Z. I'd love to be baptized. This is where I'm from. Go ahead and text your name. Go ahead and text where you're from so that we can help you give your heart to Christ and be baptized. God bless you, young man. Let's put our hands together for him, everybody. Is there someone else who is saying today, I want to surrender all. I'd love to come to the Lord's side. Is there someone here who wants to make that decision? The doors of the church are open. The doors of the Lord are open. Come and receive Christ today. Come and join these two gentlemen that are here. Saying, now is my time of salvation. Today is my day to get baptized. Lord, I want to do it. I invite you to make that choice. Holy Spirit is speaking to you. You're saying, I need Christ to transform me. I need Christ to change me, to help me. God bless you, my sister. Let's give a round of applause, somebody. Let's give a round of applause. Church, let's give a round of applause. Let's give a round of applause. God bless you. Is there somebody else who is here today? Say, I want to surrender all. I would love to get baptized. Make my invitation to you. Maybe you're on the balcony. Maybe you're in the back. Tell your neighbor, excuse me. Tell him, come down the aisle. Surrender all. All to Jesus. Maybe you're in the church. You want to raise that hand where you are. Say, Lord, I'm giving myself to you. Lord, I'm following you all the way. I invite you to make that choice today. Come on up. God bless you. Coordinator there will help you. Pastor there will reach you. An elder there will help you. Come and follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Is there another person here today saying, I want to surrender all? I want to follow Christ and be baptized. I invite you to come down to the front where you are. Where are you, my brother? Where are you, my sister? My third call is there. You're in your home, you're at your work. You can text the number that's on the screen. Go ahead and text it. Say your name. Say you would love to be baptized. Anyone else who wants to come to the Lord's side today? I make my call to you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. 
Who else wants to come to the Lord today? Saying, I'm making my choice. I want to surrender heart and mind to the Lord to be baptized. I surrender all. My invitation is there. Christ is calling you tonight. The doors of the church are open. Salvation is yours. Don't hesitate. Don't delay. Make your choice for Christ today. And surrender all. I'll repeat my three calls again. Call number one. You're here in the Prequasa Church. You see, and I've learned about the Sabbath today. I love to give my heart to Christ and to be baptized. And I invite you to stand where you are and come to the Lord's side. If you're here today, you want to make that choice. And you want to be a part of a church that honors God's seventh day. Honors God's Sabbath day. You're invited to come at this time. Maybe you're in a church, and in that church, maybe you're in a cry. Maybe you're in home. Maybe you're in Volta. Maybe you're in Sabanchida. Maybe you're in Koforidia. Wherever you may be, you're listening to this message in the church. I invite you to stand. I invite you to raise your hand. Say, Lord, I want to get my heart to you. I want to get baptized. I make that call to you today. Maybe you're here today. And you're listening from home. Listening from your work. Maybe you're in the VIP. Maybe you're in, in the truck truck. Text the number on the screen. And say, today is my time. My turn. My chance to follow Christ and be baptized. I surrender. I invite the church to stand at this time. I invite the church to stand at this time. As we pray to close. I'm closing my appeal now. As I close it. I want to make this invitation to you one more time. Maybe there's someone here today who is saying, it's my turn to accept Jesus as the Lord and Savior of my life. To choose him, make him number one. And to give my heart to him. And if that's you, just tell your neighbor, stepping aside, coming on down. It's time for me to be baptized. Maybe you've never kept a Sabbath before. You're saying this is going to be my first time to do so. And we're giving you the opportunity to. God bless you, my sister. God bless you, my brother. God is so good. We praise the Lord for the decisions made tonight. Maybe you're in the church, wherever you may be. I make the call and the invitation to you. Baptism is the best decision you can make. Because in doing so, you're saying that Christ is the Lord and Savior of my life. You're saying that you want to see him and be with him forever. And we're inviting you to do so. Maybe you're in the home. You need that text message. Send the text there. And we'll help you so that someone can baptize you. Let's bow our heads. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for teaching us about the Sabbath today. Lord, bless us so that we can enjoy this precious gift that you've given to us. Strengthen us in your precious name. Uphold us with your righteous right hand. Thank you, Lord, for the decisions made. And we ask that many more hearts will be given to you. In Jesus' precious name, amen. amen. We'll be back here. Again. Keep on standing. Keep on standing. We're about to end. Keep on standing. And what I would like for you to do at this moment is hold someone's hand next to you. Is hold someone's hand next to you. Is hold someone's hand next to you.
We'll be back here. When, everybody? When? 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 We're we'll back here at 6, at 6 o'clock. It's when our program begins. For those online, thank you for joining us today. We'll be back here at 6 o'clock when our program begins. So we invite you to be here. At 2 o'clock, for those in the Penquasa area, we have our health fair that is here for you. And at the moment, we're going to say it to close. Three times, we're going to say living with hope. So let me see the hands. Let me see the hands if you have it. All right. On the count, and before we do it, then after that, we'll have our baptism of our four people. And then from there, you're free to go home. So on the count of three, let's say it together. One, two, three. Living with hope. Living with hope. Living with hope. May God bless each and every one of you today. Let's give a round of applause for Pastor Kwadjo Chumesi. Living with? Hope. Living with? Hope. Living with? Hope. That was part one of our message, Living with Hope and God's Rest. Remember earlier, I asked you a question. What does hope mean to you? And online, we received some responses that were beautiful. In fact, somebody named Dachihima Charlotte said that hope is about something to look forward to, believing good things can still happen, and it's about seeing your best qualities and looking forward. Amen? Thank you so much for this response. As we heard in the message, and as our sister has told us, there's good things to still look forward to, despite everything that's going on. So as the baptisms are being prepared to happen, we're going to have our musical selection. So please stay tuned. But as you're staying tuned, go ahead and share the channel per usual. Take out your phone at this very moment. Maybe you have been so selfish that you thought, hmm, I might enjoy this program only for myself. But you can't. We must share the message to those who need to be reached. So take out your phone right now. Share the message. Hope TV Ghana and Hope Channel Ghana and also on outdoor broadcast. Share these messages. They can find it in four different languages. So once again, after we have our musical selection, we will have our baptism. But let us also remember, we are meeting here tomorrow at 6 o'clock sharp. Also, we still have our health screenings that are happening. They are happening here even still tomorrow from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Not 12 a.m., not 10 a.m., but 2 p.m., to 4 p.m. Come to Penquasa SDA if you want to get some health screenings and be here sharp at 6 p.m. to register into our program and to lock in for these inspiring messages. So I'm going to hand it over to our choir to give us some beautiful selections. Please feel free to enjoy, dance along as we celebrate the joy of our baptisms. Thank you so much. Come on, go. 
living with hope we want to thank God we want to bless God for tonight it is time for us to continue with the baptismal service and to the glory of God we have four candidates with me and I would want the candidates to join me I want to introduce to you these four candidates that have decided to commit their lives to Jesus Christ. And these are their names. We have Godfred Fofie, Godfred Fofie, Stephen Opon Okra, Stephen Opon Okra, Shulamati Asari, Shulamati Asari, and Nathaniel Otute Ura. These are the four candidates that have committed themselves to baptize to the glory of God. I would want us to bow down our heads for word of prayer. I did you Master Reyes and Trust Naya Bob Pai. Oh my Bob Pai. Our Father in heaven, we bless and we appreciate you for today. I want to thank you very much for your sons and your daughter that have decided and have committed themselves to baptize today. We pray committing this session of the program into your care. That Father may you descend amongst us and take absolute control over the service. We pray committing Pastor Tom watching into your care, even as he is out. Father, let your strength be his strength. And at the end of it all, let us have the cause to glorify your holy name. We thank you, O oh Lord, for an answered prayer for praying in Jesus' name. Thanks be Amen. Now, the Yusuf is so bad, and I told him, I'm going to go to the Yusuf. 
once again, Father, we thank you very much because you are the Alpha and you are the Omega. We ask of your blessings and Father, you have granted it beyond measure for us. And so I want to thank you very much in a very special way for your sons and your daughter that you have baptized today. We ask him that, Father, may you, O Lord, grant unto them the spirit of the Holy Spirit so that even as they go about their duties, they are going to be people that you use them mightily in this way. And people will see them and wonder and will say that it is you who have done it. We thank you very much for our pastor. Thank you for we ask that we continue to bless you, even as it goes for the era. Be with us, be with your church, but we ask the name of Jesus Christ to pass in you. Amen.